Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today um, in this Novage webinar, Getting Started with Flux. Are you interested in making faster and better design decisions in real time? Join Thomas Trinell as he provides an overview of the Flux suite of products, including Site Extractor and the Flux Connector apps, which enable interoperability between your favorite building design software. Thomas Trinell is an application engineer at Flux, a San Francisco-based company developing a data infrastructure platform for tomorrow's built environment. At Flux, Thomas focuses to bridge the gap between technology and building design. Let me tell you now a little bit about Novedge. Uh, Novedge is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So um, check us out at Novedge.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, you can always follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Coming up next week, Perform takeoffs faster with Bluebeam Review. Last but not least, today's webinar is recorded. And if you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to the Novages YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now I'll share Thomas' screen so he can start telling you all about Flux. Take it away, Thomas. All right. Um, can you guys hear me correctly? Is, does it sound okay, Barbara? Perfect. All right, great. Well, thank you for um, this short introduction. Um, I'll jump right right ahead. And it feels like most of the users and most of the attendees today are not necessarily users of Flux already. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start with a um, short introduction um, of Flux, um, you know, a bit more about the company, um, about our history, uh, what's our mission, and then we'll have a live demo and we'll also give you a bit of a sneak peek of uh, our product roadmap to get a sense of where we are heading. So, um, you know, one of the things that we like to start with is um, in our daily lives, um, others, other industry are now delivering a certain amount of predictability. Um, you know, if you take your phone out to go somewhere, you'll order a Uber, you can track um, the, the car on your phone and you can know exactly when the car is going to pick you up. The same thing goes with Amazon. Now you do your groceries online and you can track wherever the shipment is going, and you can know when to expect the shipment to arrive. Um, and ultimately, now building owners, um, they want to, uh, you know, they want to have the same level of predictability, whether it's, you know, for simulation, when architects are designing and planning the buildings, or even in construction, when, you know, uh, issues come up, whether on site or in the office. Um, but ultimately, where we see the most value is, once you consolidate all that information that's being generated either through the design or the construction life cycle, what is the learning that you can take out of that data? Um, so really deriving some information from the data that's being generated. But that comes with one uh, major problem is right now the industry doesn't have a good infrastructure to store and organize that data and then uh, you know get some information from it. So, um, really, um, predictability is hard when you have these walls. Um, we've always faced, I mean, we all face these problems. I, I, I know, have a background in structural engineering and getting information out of Revit or trying to go from Rhino to Revit or even just, you know, get simple information such as schedules out of Revit. There's no direct access into Excel. Um, and so not only do we want to break the walls between the teams, but also between the software themselves. Um, so this is really what we're trying to achieve. Um, we actually, uh, as a company, uh, was founded inside of Google X. Um, it was the initial uh, Google X project and then it was put out as an independent company. Um, we're now you know, focusing on delivering these um, data infrastructure for the cloud. Um, and yeah, so this is really why Flux was created in the first place, um, really to address the, this issue about having siloed information um, and data, you know, contained in different software. And ultimately, what we, what we hope to achieve by breaking these silos is to limit the amount of rework that people spend on recreating models or regenerating information or even just mining data that's already stored somewhere or it has been created by someone else. And lastly, the last kind of guiding principle that, you know, drives most of our recent work um, with the apps, we've actually released uh, our app store 
earlier this year in April, um, it's really about thinking how we can integrate everyone in the food chain in the process in the digital tools. So, you know, we have people that come from different backgrounds, have different levels of expertise. Uh, some people were trained in school to use Revit or Navisworks that are very complex, very sophisticated tools. Um, some of us, you know, were, were taught on paper or actually are only just, you know, good at drafting and drawing and ideation, but everyone should be able to participate to the design and should have some a say in what's going on. And what's common with all these people is that we use phones, we use apps, and we know how to use these simple tools. Um, and this really is what drives our recent work with the apps, is to deliver very simple tools that are connected to a common platform where people can come and interact and you know, really be part of um, the digital process and the digital workflow. So today, Flux is really three major components. Um, the first one is the ability to link building information. So as, as Barbara said during the introduction, Flux um, has a set of connector tools that integrates directly inside of your design um, and you know, planning uh, software. So it's not so much about saving your file um, you know, in a drive similar as you know, Dropbox or Box or Google Drive, we are directly integrated inside of the tools seamlessly so that you can pick and choose whatever information you want to share across. Um, and then we also have a set of apps online that allow you to do uh, some work. So we have, for instance, Site Extractor that we'll review together, which allows you to extract site information from open database in the web and then push that information back into your models. So you can see how with, with this common layer in the cloud, you can start collecting information and then sharing it across different platforms. But ultimately, where we see the biggest value and where we see the heart of what we do is building this infrastructure. So we are an open platform and we want to encourage people to come and build their own tools on our platform. Um, we've actually partnered with a couple of companies and we, are, we have a team dedicated to building these uh, relationships where we actually leverage data contained in the platform and then we service it um, in, in a different way. So some, you know, some companies want dashboard and analytics, some other companies want to run algorithms in the cloud, but ultimately it's all about taking advantage and leveraging the data that you guys are generating during the design and planning um, phases of the, of the building. Um, so, um, the analogy that I like to give is really this one of the app, and I've probably mentioned that several times already, but you guys are familiar with the different icons that, um, you know, are on that screen, and most of you have, um, I would assume, used them before, um, but what really these apps have in common is that they are built on the same operating system, uh, whether it's an iPhone, an Android, um, you know, they are all using the same backend infrastructure. Um, and so Flux is really trying to leverage um, this idea and build the same process for the building industry. It's really trying to be the operating system for your building. Um, and, and the analogy that we also like to give is having a digital representation of your building in a data center. So really a digital avatar of that building that lives in a data center. But then comes the next question is how do you access that information that is located in this data center? And this is really where um, Flex is trying to position itself, is trying to be that layer which will allow stakeholders and the rest of the industry to communicate with that information stored in a data center. Uh, and ultimately, you know, deliver a set of services through these simple apps to communicate with that information. So today, um, if you connect um, and create your own account, by the way, a side note on this, um, if you're new to Flux, you can directly go to our website, flux.io, and you can already create an account for free. Uh, Flux will grant you access to two projects and up to two gigabytes of data. And as soon as you connect, you'll have access to all these apps um, and, and many more. Um, and so we have integrations with this tool uh, from Autodesk like Revit, AutoCAD, um, even Dynamo for more computational design savvy um, users. Uh, but we also integrate with um, other software vendors. We're really agnostic. Um, we, we have integrations with Grasshopper and Rhino, as well as Excel and SketchUp from Trimble. Um, so we really are um, connecting to a lot of the tools that are actually um, you know, sold and, and shared by uh, Novich, as Barbara said. Um, and these tools are already available. There is no kind of tier subscription. Um, if you have an account, you have access to everything, and then you can pick and choose the different tools that you want for your own purposes, and then you can use them inside of your, of your design processes. 
Um, I won't spend too much time on one of these individual tools just because we'll probably um, go over uh, some of these uh, during the live demo uh, part of, of the presentation. So uh, another aspect of Flux, which is interesting, and this is kind of tying back to this idea that Flux is an open platform, is that we actually integrate Flux with third-party databases. Um, so the site extractor tool connects to information from OpenStreetMap as well as topographical information from NASA. Um, and what this really means is that Flux has the ability to plug itself on any database that would be either contained inside of your company or even a tool that we don't have an integration for. Uh, we could, you know, build other bridges to get your information inside of the platform. Um, so as I said, uh, today when you connect to Flux, um, you will be redirected to what we call our App Store. Um, so this is the UI right now. And whenever a person creates a new account, they will be able to have five pre-installed apps. Um, so the first one on the top left here is our community uh, website, which allows you to um, you know, share information across different teams. Uh, it's, it's an online forum where you can find questions from other users. Um, and then you have our data explorer tool, which is a viewer online. Actually, just a side note, um, the viewer is a technology that's completely open source. We actually encourage people to use some of our technologies that have been open source to you know, facilitate their development process if they want to build their own tools. Um, and then the flow is a similar interface as Grasshopper and Dynamo. So for those that are not familiar with these tools, it's a graphical programming uh, interface in the web. To put it simply, just think of macros for your BIM models. Um, so the same way you're building macros in Excel, it's a similar tool for building logics and rules uh, on the data that's contained inside of Flux. And finally, you have a project app, uh, which allows you to you know, set permissions, invite collaborators to projects so you can all guys work on the same data set. So this is an example of a tool um, that we've released called the Site Extractor. Um, so during the presentation, we'll cover a couple of cases, um, but I think Site Extractor illustrates very well um, the idea of interoperability that I was talking about earlier. So as a user, you start in that very simple interface, which looks like kind of Google Maps, where you search for a location, you put a box which extracts that information, and then as soon as this information is extracted, you can easily push it to the other um, you know, software that you're using for design. So you can get your topography inside of SketchUp or in Rhino or in Revit, AutoCAD, and so on and so on. So it's really about sharing the same database or the same information inside of the different tools without dealing with file exports or file versions or emails or anything. Another one that I like to showcase is um, the scheduler tool. Um, so this, in, this highlights the fact that once you know, we connect to the different tools, we actually get all the metadata attached inside of your models. So if you're creating geometry or a facade or anything in Revit and you want to share, share that with Flux, we'll actually capture all the parameters stored inside of your model, whether they're type parameters, they're custom parameters or instance parameters, we'll be able to get all that information, bundle it together and send it to Flux. And the scheduler tool here um, that you can see on the screen is a tool that allows you to create schedules on the fly. So you go to the web um, and you very easily create these kind of um, scheduling, you know, these tables, and you can actually invite collaborators to come and, you know, edit these schedules on the web and then sync it with the Revit model. And finally, um, so I'll get a glance through this um, really quickly, but. Um, the last component of the platform we mentioned was really this open platform. Um, so we do have services specialized, dedicated to developers. Um, we have our APIs that are completely open source in C Sharp and JavaScript. Um, and we offer um, dedicated support for any company or any entity that would be interested in building their own tools and apps on Flux. Um, and here's an example of an app that we've worked um, with Brewer Happold. Um, it's an engineering company that's based in the UK, and they've released a um, smart space analyzer tool, which is an algorithm that analyzes the pedestrian flow on a specific site. So you put different locations where the pedestrians are coming from, and then it computes the optimal distance based on the building footprints and the roads from that location to um, the rest of any location on the map. This app is actually now available on our app store. Um, so they really, um, what they wanted to do is, they wanted to kind of get this information that was developed by the R&D department and make it available throughout the whole company. 
So they migrated their logic um, inside of a web app, and now anyone can access it. And this tool is actually available in our app store. So anyone can log in and get the tools and start using it right now. Um, so I'll just wrap up on showing you a couple of, you know, displaying a couple of companies that um, have been working with us and have been putting their trust um, in, in working with Flux. Um, so right now we work with a lot of the major architectural firm uh, across the globe, you know, uh, working with um, Perkins and Will and HOK, SOM, Gensler, KPF in, in the UK. So we have offices all around the world um, that are really, you know, using our tools on a daily basis to um, do their designs. And we're now more and more working with uh, general contractors as well. Um, so companies like Balfour Beatty or Lindlease um, that are really more interested in, in um, how we can start mining information that's stored in their Rabbit model to make use of that data. So um, I think that brings me to um, a live demo. Um, I'm sure you know you probably have a lot of questions by now. And as Barbara said, please feel free to um, you know write them down in the um, chat box um, of the GoToWebinar interface. And I'll obviously have a bit of time at the end to answer all your questions. And if I don't. Um, feel free to just always write them down also in our community website um, online. All right, so this is a live webinar, um, so we never know what's going to happen. I obviously rehearsed these um, sessions before today, but fingers crossed nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to start from really the bare bone. Um, you can actually go on our website, uh, flux.io, and from here you can create your own account through the sign up button. Obviously, I already have one, um, so I'm going to go directly in my own account um, and log in. So as I log in, uh, Flux will redirect me to uh, my app store. So you see I have a couple of apps that are connected to my account uh, on top of the four ones that I described earlier. And I even have this kind of simple um, app that I've been working on. So you can see that even if you're creating your own tools, you can actually connect them to your account. Um, and then as I scroll down, I have these other options um, of tools that I might have not used yet um, that I can kind of install and start using. Um, and then in the bottom, you have um, the Flux Lab section, um, which is really about all the experimental projects that we're working on, and we put it in front of the users to get their feedback on how we can do better and improve on, on the Flux Labs section. So what we'll do um, is we'll start with Site Extractor, um, so that you guys can get a feel on how to use Flux and how Flux um, you know, works. So to do that, um, you just simply click on the app that you want to launch. So I'm going to click here on the Site Extractor app, which is going to send me on an other profile. Um, and I can see here I'm redirected to this kind of uh, web interface um, where I have a map in the background. I can write you know, an address right here. So I'm going to do, um, you know, let's say, um, Central Park, uh, New York. Yeah, I'm giving you a sneak peek. I'm actually going to New York for the Christmas holiday, so I was in very uh, creative and uh, gave her the first thing that came to mind. Um, so anyway, so you know, just selecting this um, particular site, um, and then uh, maybe we want some waterfront with some parks and some uh, freeways. Um, so we're going to select this. Um, place here with uh, Battery Park um, City. And then as soon as I'm you know, satisfied with my selection, I can select the different, uh, what we call data layers that you're interested in. So you want maybe to get the building footprints and a, a potential model of your building, as well as the topography, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even set the um, intervals between your different contour lines. Um, so once you've done that, you can just click to, to select a project and what Flux will do, um, it'll you know, ask you to select a project inside of your list of projects that you want to use um, to send the data to. But if you haven't authorized the app before, uh, Flux will also prompt you to connect your account to this app. This is very much you know, like when, in, when you install information um, or when you install an app on your phone, there's always a kind of a pop-up that says, are you sure you want to install that on your phone? So it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so, you know, selecting that data, um, and then I'm going to be sending it to my project. So I've prepared a little project for today called the Novage Site Extractor. Um, so I'm going to send this there, and then you can see Flux is kind of loading, um, and it's extracting all that information, and then sending it to um, that particular project. 
Um, obviously, if I wanted to choose another project, I could have just typed a new name and create a project from there. Um, and that's as easy as this. So once the extraction is done, Flux kind of redirects you and, and prompts you to use um, other apps. So we're going to go and, uh, and launch the Data Explorer. So if you, remind, if you remember, the Data Explorer is our viewer app. So this is really just an interface where you can see the information that was sent inside of your projects. Um, so in the Knowledge Site Extractor tool, uh, pro, sorry, in the Knowledge Site Extractor project, I now have the list of information stored on the left side. So you can see I have a topographic mesh, I have my building footprint, and to view any of this information, I can actually just double click on it, and it will open a window in which um, the topography will be loaded. So we can see here, I have the topography of the city of New York that's been loaded. Um, I was hoping to get more interesting topography, but I guess it's fairly flat on that part of the island. Um, and then I'm gonna maybe overlay some other information. So I'm gonna drag and drop it on the viewport, and it will add the information of the building footprint. So you can see here in a couple of seconds, I get all this information directly added um, inside of my, in my project. And I can add, you know, the roads and also maybe um, the building heights if I want to get some massings of the city. So in really a couple of seconds, I get a really clear picture of the site context uh, of the city. Um, and then, you know, you're probably asking, well, that's fine. You know, I have this kind of um, different layers that I can turn on and off and I can see. But really what I'm mostly interested in is using that information for my models. Um, and so this is where the connector really comes in handy. You actually will go to another tool like Rhino and turns out I've already installed the Rhino app uh, on my, on my uh, computer. But if you didn't have um, the Rhino app installed, it's as easy as this. You go inside of your app store, you pick the tool you want, let's say Grasshopper, and then you click download. And this will download the installer for that specific app. Um, so everything is really accessible in the App Store, and then you can pick and choose the one that you want to use. So back to Rhino. I now have this little um, you know, interface um, with the different uh, buttons, and you can see that you can either create a connection to receive data or to send data. So because we've just extracted the site information, I'm going to receive information, and I'm going to select my project called Novedge Site Extractor. And then I'm going to select the topographic mesh. And if I do that, Flux is now fetching the information stored in the web and pushing it into your model. Um, and actually, if I had shared that project with anyone else, one of my collaborators could also have used the same data inside of their model. And now you can see I have a beautiful kind of topographical mesh inside of um, Rhino that has been sent. And if I wanted to share that with another collaborator right here, I could just say invite collaborators and invite my colleague Jeffrey, for instance, to use that information as well. And as I invite him to that project, he now has access to the same data uh, as the one that I'm extracting. So we can start modeling using the same information. So let's just do another one just to show you. Uh, we'll get the um, building um, masses. And there you go. And then maybe go in a different view. So you can see now I have all the city um, in an instant being generated inside of, of Rhino. And what's really interesting is obviously this data is not just stored inside of Rhino. You can go and sketch up and perform the same operation um, and receive that data down um, inside of your projects. Um, so I'm going to go to the Novedge webinar. Oh, actually, it seems like I'm not in the right account. So let me just do that again. Let me um, log out and log in again. Uh, for you. Oh, I guess that was not what I was trying to do. Always um, some um, things that don't go the right way when you're doing live demos. Um, so I'll just reopen uh, SketchUp for a second. There you go. So to log out from Flux, it's fairly easy. You can see here there's a little bit of an account icon. So I just click here and you can see I'm not logged in on my personal account. So I'm going to log out and then I'm going to log back in and choose Thomas, um, there you go. And then this is just loading, and um, as soon as it's done loading, um, I can access my data. So I'm gonna click here to get the different connections, 
and I'm going to select the same project. So, all right, back to my demo. So now I'm back in my connection uh, manager. I'm using the Novetch side extractor project, and I'm selecting same thing, the topographic mesh here. There we go. Um, now uh, the the tool is actually extracting the topography and it's pushing it into SketchUp. And now we have the actually city of New York that's being loaded uh, right here inside of SketchUp. And if I wanted to get, um, you know, the buildings as well, I could just go get um, the building masses and um, there would be loaded inside of SketchUp. And it's really, really easy, you know, like in, in a click, I could just double click in here and decide to make a modification because for some reason, um, that's not the right height. So I actually modify that object. Um, and as soon as I modify that, I can click in here and say, send it back. So I can I can flip the orientation of that connection. So I, I actually just, um, you know, send these selected elements back, click yes. And you can see that Flux is just updating the information in the web now. So if I go back to my Rhino model, the connection has turned green because I've actually modified the same connection. So I can just receive it again, and you'll see that the stall building here in the middle will just shrunk down because I've actually made an update. Um, and so it actually it actually lowered um, this building uh, down. So that's it. I mean, I'm not gonna go much further for the side extractor. Um, I wanted to move to another demo, which is a little bit more kind of a real life use case. Uh, but I, I think it's important to show that particular demo because it really demonstrates how Flux can start, you know, connecting your different tools, even though they don't usually talk to each other in a way that's actually real time. Um, so really, any modifications that happen, you can see it pop on the other side and you can really start having these collaborative uh, workflows. So let me close um, this one Rhino file and open something that I have prepared for you guys. I'm going to close SketchUp as well, and I'm going to reopen. There you go. So I have this um, Rhino file here um, that's been, uh, you know, was actually a real project that was used in Vietnam. It's um, the, uh, it was like a facade work on a, on a cinema uh, that's been built in Hanoi. And um, the designer um, kind of built the whole kind of Revit model, uh, sorry, the whole um, existing structure inside of Rhino and was doing some facade exploration with Grasshopper. Um, so we have this um, building here, and then the question was like, okay, how do they get this information into Revit now? Because they want to get into, you know, detail phase, and they want to get the data, um, you know, model in a proper BIM software. Um, so they wanted to get a way to connect what they had initially done in um, Grasshopper and Rhino inside of um, Revit. So the way the uh, designer did it is, as I said, you have this initial massing inside of Rhino. And so we'll zoom out a little bit. And then that person created uh, a kind of a grasshopper definition that defined this facade, this facade like um, panels here. It's kind of a diagrid, um, which is uh, you know, composed of uh, glass panels. And then you have a structural system between the different glass panels that connect them. And then in the background you have uh, a, a bit of a truss system that connects the facade to the actual building. Um, it's been obviously simplified a lot uh, just because we're not allowed to show the actual model, but just to illustrate the workflow. Um, and in Grasshopper, um, you know, we had these different options um, where the owners were not set whether or not they wanted something curved or something that was like triangular shaped. Um, they really were, you know, exploring different options. And at this point in time, you don't want to be set in stone and you don't want to be, you know, recreating your AutoCAD drawings over and over and over again. So you want to be working in a more agile environment where you're kind of doing updates um, regularly. So you can see that in my script, I can modify a couple of, um, you know, parameters that updates the, the panels. And then at some point, I want to get that inside of um, Revit. So what we've done is we've connected um, this uh, environment to Flux. So we have our own plugins here uh, and our own boxes that are sending the data to Flux directly. And actually we'll see that the data is connected live. So if I open my, rev, my Flux project and I look at um, the information in the web, 
um, we will see the data being um, you know, updated live as I'm modifying some of the parameters. So we'll just open the curves. Um, if, I, if it's working fine, let me just double check. Um, seems like it just updated. Uh, there you go. This is the Knowledge Computational Design project. So let's just make sure everything is running fine. Um, constantly. There you go. So we have our curves here in the web, and I can add, you know, the trust in the background as well as the different facet panels. Um, so we're just, you know, using the points for now to kind of locate them. And as I'm making updates, so like actually this is the cool part. If I'm making updates to the Grasshopper script in the real time, you can see, well, uh, not maybe see very well, but we'll see the, the flux part actually update here in the background. So if I'm changing this to five, um, you'll see, there you go. You see flux that kind of updates in, in, in the same time. So you really start having these kind of collaborative real-time experiences where you're actually updating your model uh, on the fly. So enough with the kind of um, playing with the parameters. Let me show you what you can do with that data now that it's in the web. So we have that information. Uh, we're happy with it, and we want to kind of have it into um, Revit now. So I'm going to um, you know, stop playing with the different objects. I'm going to get the data inside of Revit. So I'm going to go inside of Revit. I'm going to open a Revit project that I had prepared um, on my desktop. The nope, this one. Oh, this is not working. Uh, okay, I wanted to get in the desktop. There you go. So I'm using this uh, project where we actually had loaded a, a basic massing of the of the building. Um, so this actually, all this data has been uh, imported directly using um, the Flux um, the Flux app. Um, so we actually use the Flux plugin to get all the massing uh, from uh, from Rhino. Um, here inside of Revit. So um, we didn't actually recreate the model in Revit. We used all the different layers and we um, sent it to Revit. So it was um, very easy to recreate that project. And now we want to create the facade. That's a little bit more complex to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to open uh, Dynamo. And um, I have a little script which is connected to uh, Flux. So let me open this real quick. There you go, and I'm gonna open uh, my script for this morning. There you go, so you can see I have um, some Dynamo blocks that are kind of connected to Flux, um, and um, I don't actually have to uh, look at how it's defined. Uh, for the people that are not really familiar with Dynamo, um, there's no need to um, waste too much time around this, but the idea is um, now with uh, the Flux blocks, I have a live connection between uh, my Grasshopper script that I was showing earlier and this Rhino script here. So I'm gonna run this, and you can see that all the data that I had sent from Grasshopper is now going to be generated inside of, um, of Flux. So I'm gonna run this. And I might wanna choose the right structural framing. Um, so uh, we're gonna use an HSS section and then we're gonna use a larger section for the trusses and then we're using our adaptive glass panel. So let's run this. And we'll see that the facade will be generated in a couple of seconds um, in, inside of Revit. And so now I really truly have a live connection between uh, my Grasshopper file and, and my uh, Revit file. So there you go. I have um, this facade schema that's now being generated live inside of Dynamo. And if I update whatever um, model I had done, maybe I want to choose the triangular facade um, because that was a better schema. I can go back to Revit and just rerun that 
and everything will be regenerated for me um, because I now have that life connection between um, Grasshopper and, and Dynamo. There you go. So now I have all these glass panels that are regenerated instantly. So, I mean, I guess for the people that are kind of more computational, like, you know, less computational savvy that are not using Dynamo, at this point, you're probably wondering like, well, fine, you know, I, it's really cute, really nice, but I, I don't do Grasshopper, I don't do Dynamo. Well, let me show you an interesting thing that can be done with Flux as well. So now that I have these different panels or these different beams, I can actually use our plugins as well to send the data back to Flux. So if I send all of this and I create a connection to send it back to Flux, I'm going to choose the um, thing called Diagrid. Uh, I think it's called the uh, Diagrid, um, the facet, uh, facet framing. So I'm going to send it to that specific location. Um, I'm going to send these elements. Um, and then I'm going to send the, the trusses um, as well um, in the same location. So I'm going to send all these instances uh, inside of the of the trusses structure. And you can actually now access that information directly in the web. So in here, the same way I was looking at my Grasshopper uh, data, I can now look at um, the information sent from uh, Revit. So um, I'll go to the project uh, where I send the data and I can double click to see um, the facade framing here. And I have all the Revit information that was sent into the web. And I can actually start scheduling this now. Maybe I want you know, to get the actual material information or the actual data. So the last thing I'm gonna show this morning is I'm gonna to go to another app, um, which is um, our scheduler tool. So we're gonna go here to scheduler, launch that. And I'm gonna select that specific project that I was working on. And I'm going to get these um, different beams um, that I just sent and create a schedule for it. So I'm going to use the um, the data that I was sending. Um, so I'm going to use the uh, facade framing, the structural, and then I'm saying new schedule. There you go. So I'm going to open this, and now I'll have to choose the different uh, you know family information, so like the category the level, um, maybe the cut length, um, the, um, I don't know what would be interesting for us, maybe usually you wanna get the area, right? Because you wanna get a uh, total uh, estimation of the, of the volume of steel that's gonna be stored in that model. So I'm gonna go here and get the volume, um, and there you go. So now you have this kind of the different panels here, the different uh, elements, and I have my schedule with the different objects, and I can actually um, get all this information um, scheduled out really quickly. And if I want to do to get that into Excel, I can simply just download that into a CSV, and there you go. I have uh, my schedule ready uh, for use um, uh, here down in Excel. So, and obviously, um, you know, there are many, many other things you could do with Flux. These are just kind of preliminary. Um, um, examples. I hope I didn't really overwhelm you with all that information. Um, it's more just to give you a bit of examples or kind of give you ideas of the type of workflows you could you could try to achieve um, with our tools. So I think that's about it for the live demo. Um, I uh, obviously will take questions, but before that, I just want to give you a bit of a kind of a really quick um, snap sneak peek on where we're going next. Um, so. In the future, in the next year, our main focus is to try to branch out the platform to other purposes than just design. We actually acknowledge that a lot of the things that are happening during the design to enhance collaboration is people file issues and they kind of review their models and they kind of navigate in the 3D space and they want to create um, you know, questions or a request for information or even just an issue or maybe they want to collect all the information from a clash test. So we are working hard right now to and um, some of the tools that we have on the platform to be able to handle coordination between stakeholders. So whether it's between a design team or it's whether between different um, you know, stakeholders with the GCs and the subs, um, we're gonna have an integration with Navisworks that's gonna also connect to Revit. So you're gonna have a direct you know, connection uh, between these two tools and in the future also have issues that can be created in Rhino or even in 
in AutoCAD and so on. And we actually are growing on the platform to have the ability to host more information. Um, so we are releasing also a drive in the near future. Um, so I kind of went ahead, I uh, should have uh, shown these different slides, but this is a sneak peek of our, of our tool that's gonna be um, built for Navisworks. And it's gonna have the same kind of interface for Revit, where you can really easily go to the location of your issue um, and see what are the different comments that have been made. And you know, maybe uh, Dave here was like, okay, this door is really not the right size. I would prefer if um, we had more lights in that room and then they can comment and create an issue for this. Um, and in the future, you'll also have the ability to attach documents, attach geometry, attach view that specific issue. And this will come with a refactored kind of infrastructure in the web where you can store all that data inside of a drive. So that's it. Um, so I'm going to wrap up um, with some next steps for you guys. Um, obviously, I would encourage you to join the community. Uh, we have a, a Twitter account, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as a Medium account where we kind of post regularly articles and success stories with some of our users. Um, also, we have our own personal online community website. So if you have any questions about our product, um, you can type flux.io community and uh, make sure to get in touch over there and we'll answer all your questions. Um, yeah, so um, the last thing is if there's anyone among you that's interested in getting a demo for your firm or you're curious about how you can use Flux to solve some of your problems, uh, please contact hello at flux.io and we would love to set up a um, intro call for you and your team and understand how Flux can be used to solve some of your problems. That's right. wonderful. That's Thank you, Thomas. That's. I think it's important to get this trial and and set up these, um, you know, demos and 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 try out for yourselves how how easier it is to connect mm -hmm. for your uh, all your tools. Uh, we have one question, and it's from Donovan. How do the Rhino layers translate to Revit objects? Yeah. So um, it's Donovan, right? Yes. Donovan. Yeah, so um, right now, when you try to import information instead of Revit directly from Rhino, um, the layers are not going to be kept just because you're familiar with the way Rhino modeling is, right? You layer per, you model per layers, and all this information is captured by Flux. So actually, if you send it to Flux, Flux will know in which layer uh, the information was built in inside of Rhino. But since when you move to Revit, um, it's less exposed to the user, this idea of layering and, and, and everything. So what we do is we kind of flatten this. So we'll just send um, whatever geometry was contained in that layer inside of Revit. Um, we actually have uh, right now the ability to get everything inside of Revit as a direct shape. So if you're trying to get a massing or even just a piece of geometry that was created in Rhino, inside of Revit will allow you to do that, but it will create a um, either a mesh or VRF inside of Revit but as, a, as a generic component. We actually are going to be releasing a tool in, in the lab space of our app store very soon, which will do uh, some of that translation automatically. So in the future, we'll be able to convert like Rhino geometry directly into a floor or a wall or so on. And uh, are there plans to have connectivity with ARCHICAD in the future? So um, actually, yeah, I mean, we can really talk openly about this because um, we are, we, we, we debated a lot internally whether or not we should, uh, you know, connect to other BIM um, software. Um, it's really in our interest to be as open as possible. So I think, um, it's not I think, but I can tell you for sure the main I guess the, the, the immediate release um, that we're going to work on is integrating with IFC. So that's kind of going to be able to set everyone on the same page where whether you're doing Tecla work or ARCHICAD work, um, you can still export to, um, to IFC and then get, it, get the data into Flux. So we're not planning in, in the short term, don't get me wrong, in the short term, we're not planning to have an ARCHICAD integration, but we will definitely um, in the long run, have the ability to ingest, you know, as many BIM information that you guys are generating. So it's going to start with IFC, but we're definitely not closing the door for ARCHICAD. And if there's anyone out there that's interested in building its own, we actually have uh, plugins um, code base that we are happy to open source or share with you guys to help you start with the development. That's great news. That's awesome.
And what about SketchUp models? Do Floors Labs come in as floors or are they generic models? So it's a similar uh, approach as what I said before. Um, the people that are obviously um, modeling in, in SketchUp and Revit uh, will be familiar with the idea that um, a SketchUp model is a um, surface-based modeling tool, so you don't actually attach metadata uh, to the geometry. Um, so right now, if there's no work done by the user, um, it will come as a generic model. But this new tool that we're going to release uh, will be able to pick up uh, whether or not um, you know you want to translate that into a floor object, and it should be doing the translation for you guys. So this is something that we're um, uh, going to release hopefully by the end of the year in Flux Labs, and then we'll grow it over time. Um, so right now, the short answer is it sends its generic object um, in a couple of months, hopefully, I mean, a couple of weeks, hopefully you'll be able to test out a tool that's going to convert it for you. Thanks, Thomas. I think uh, this is it for questions. I'm going to leave it open another uh, minute or so uh, if anybody can come up with um, um, you know, other questions or comments. Um, in the meantime, I will uh, uh, take back the screen, but I'm, you know, I'll keep the questions uh, open, and um, you, you're welcome to have last minute uh, intervention. Um, in the meantime, I want to show everybody where they can find Flux and get the best deal online. Um, this is the Novedge product page. Just you know, search for Novedge.com, and then we have all brands and. Uh, all the products, it's very easy to navigate. And uh, I think this is a great idea because um, I, I like the fact that um, Flux is thinking about enhanced collaboration and direct connectivity. I think this is the next frontier, especially in construction. So if you um, use modern application like Rhino, Revit, Excel, Grasshopper, SketchUp, AutoCAD, 3D Max, you name it, uh, you should uh, seriously consider Flux. And um, next week, we'll have a webinar on uh, uh, with Bluebeam Review. And uh, uh, while I'm waiting to read uh, another questions, um, I want to remind everybody uh, to you can always find Novage on YouTube, uh, Google Plus, Facebook, uh, Twitter. And um, let me uh, read the last question for uh, Thomas. Have you considered BricsCAD's new Beam functionality? And will you develop an app for it eventually? I think it's part of the same um, you know, project to expand and be open. What do you say, Thomas? Um, BricsCAD, so that's a, it seems like a tool that I, oh yes, I've, I've come across them um, in the past. Um, we don't have a direct plan to integrate with BricsCAD, but um, as I said, um, if they have an integration with IFC, um, it's probably going to be um, the best way to go to Flux, but uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have anything uh, offered directly for BricsCAD, but uh, yeah, I guess it's something we could consider. And it's good to make suggestions. You know, you can contact uh, Flux directly and say, "Hey, what about this?" You know, and if, I think uh, if there's demand, I, I think uh, you guys will be happy to develop it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, great. This was the last question, and I want to remind everybody that today's webinar uh, has been recorded. And you can watch it again on our YouTube and Vimeo channel, where there's a uh, you know, a huge list of webinars um, for every software taste. And thanks again for joining us today. Uh, looking forward to feature Flux again in the future. And check it out, uh, novage.com, or contact them directly. And um, this was wonderful. Thomas, thanks again for a great demo. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Yeah, thank you for having me. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.